Welcome once again, all you Warhammers and Warhammies. This is not going to be the best episode of Big M's Power Hour to date. As you can tell, I'm not feeling the greatest. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You've already put on one good performance this week. You had to give it over to the Strength Hammer crew. That's they true. needed somebody to bring that podcast up. They needed a so, little life. They needed a little zest. Yes, they did. Um, yes, they did. I'm going to blame Nurgle's favorite son, Dave, who, even though I didn't see him, at Adept and Won't, still got me sick. Yeah, no, I think that that's very reasonable. Very reasonable. Regardless of that, here, wait, hold on, just in case Dave's watching. Irregardless of that, uh, I am your host, Big M, along with uh, the best co-host in the world, Cole of the Blood Sea. Yeah, yeah, the Cole of the Blood Sea. I'll take it. I'll take it. Although, uh, I'll admit, I don't have corn behind me right now, uh, but... I'm excited for whenever I do finally get the chance to sit down and enjoy the new book. What do we got in this elf right now? Uh, right now we've got some Space Marines because although 10th has already been announced, well, for one, there's already 10 Terminators back there. Sorry, I know the new <laughs> Terminators are going to look better. However, don't worry, I'll smash this them. This is what I got. I'll so. smash them and then you can come home but... and you're like, Jamie, Matt smashed my Terminators. I need new ones now. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do no, much highlight, but now, right? <laughs> even though with all of that, there's going to be a small tournament, kind of local, uh, and I'm going to see how it goes. Uh, we got to play a little bit of Adepto Won't, and I went, you know what? I haven't played 40K in so long. I'm kind of shit at it right now. <laughs> I got to fix that. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll touch uh, on yeah. Adepto Won't a little bit, just because we went over my side, but not your side. If you are interested in my side, check out the. Um, main show of the channel last week's episode i believe secondary show of the channel anyway the shorter show of the week <laughs> that that is true um so with that being said throat's already getting dry let's take a look at the month that was <clears throat> so starting off on march 4th we got our look at uh the first or well, we got a look at the new desperately needed slanesh foot hero yeah, because we definitely didn't... Hey, look, everyone had to get their one. Um, I couldn't even tell you half of the Slanesh Foot heroes off the top of my head, though, which I feel a little bad about, but not too bad about. Like, um, oh, we get it. They had their time in the sun, still being punished. <laughs> still. <sighs> to be honest, though, this model... Really not that bad. Very Slanesh feeling. Just it's come and get it. And to be honest, the only way they messed up, well, and even then, they probably didn't mess up. The cod piece probably should have been a lot more Ballot. flamboyant. However, <laughs> there is enough surface area there for you to do with it what you will. Yeah. Um, like I said, as far as that goes, my, I, I'm, I'm not impressed with it. No, it's not I'm, like a I'm wow not, model. There's, I'm not. There's no reason to complain about it. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a um, painter's dream with all the room for tattoos and. Yeah. No, that's and like you're saying blank space in the cod piece, so they can. I mean, yeah. Draw a little dick butt if they want. Well, why not? Yeah. Um, now, the only thing I do complain about is those are stormcast boots. They are Stormcast And so boots. whenever we saw wow. the face as the rumor engine, I said it was a Stormcast thing. So, screw some that. It made me wrong. Wow. Wow. They just, they loved the boots so much, <laughs> they stole them off of him. Yeah, like they're not that it's different. pretty good. No, they, they really are. I, I'm not going to be able to unsee it now. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. Uh, moving along, the other army that desperately needed a foot hero, Corn. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> the cry and shame here is it's it's a mortal one. And mm -hmm. whenever we get to the book, I think the demons could have used a little bit more. So, but I still think this one will probably see play in most of the corn books just because it is a slightly cheaper priest. And I think that once per game ability might actually have a few spots where it's That's worth it. Just adding one to attack rolls. Yeah. Once Oof. per game. But that objective marker is probably going to be there yeah, the yeah. whole game. 
So, oh, that's right. It's right. It's once per game you pick an objective marker that now does that. So if I do that on turn two, I've got four turns of enjoying this perk. So I just pick the center objective piece and go, okay, I'm going to get more swings now. It's um, a good day. I am not a fan of this model. I don't disagree as far as the model's concerned. I don't think it get does anything the, for me. If you get rid of the horns, so it's no longer a blood letter helm. And of course, now, the little the corn thing in the staff. But that's a. I think whatever she's got on her back, I think is what overdid it for me. I mean, it's dumb. It's the whole thing is dumb. Look, I like the idea of the priests trying to pretend to be blood letters because they're worshiping them or whatever. That's fine. But I don't think the first female model in the line should be the one that like is essentially in the back being all dainty with a staff. I can agree with you one hundred percent. And to be fair, we had Valkia, but the only not Valkia model, yeah. She probably should have been up in the front heaving the biggest axe we could have ever seen. That would have been very much. I love corn. And uh, people at home, uh, I I am hitting the mute button. I hope it's not picking it up. I'm sure you're hearing it cold, but <laughs> well, yeah, I'm hearing it, and I'm going to try and talk over yeah. it every time you do it. If and I so I hope my... you all love hearing me this episode. I've learned that if I mute my microphone, it doesn't stop the recording. Well, it's okay. I'll hear it for our audience. Um, so yeah, so like I said, pretty disappointing, um, but. It is what it is. It's not. Yeah. It, if someone, I'll tell you, someone proxied it and was like, "Hey, this is my, what is she, the blood, blood scholar?" Oh, geez, realm gore ritualist. That doesn't even follow the trend. I know. I know. well, look, look, they finally ran out of things to pair with Skull blood. blood drinker, like blood burner or right. something like that. Done. We could have come up with lots of good stuff. Damn it, GW. I know, miss. All right. Actually, so miss. We had to bring up a 40k thing. <clears throat> Legendary Commander yep. Dante uh, announced well ahead of time. Yeah. Because GW done fucked up and sent him out. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, he's fine. Yeah. If, if you told me to, to come up with a Dante thing, I'd, I'd probably come up with this. Yeah, that's pretty fair. I mean, it's not like this big wow factor, but yeah. I'm not upset about it. No. That's for certain. Yeah, you you went up to bat, you bunted, you got onto base. Good job. Uh, yeah, sometimes <laughs> we're okay with that. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big Blood Angel fan. Are you? I am not. The problem is that my local where I learned to play Warhammer. Everyone and their brother was a Blood Letters fan. Uh, so I have a small place in my heart. It's mostly contempt for that model because in 5th edition he was way too fucking good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, moving along. Speaking of something else that was leaked too early, uh, the Lion. Yeah. Did you see that a couple people got the uh, the starter box with him? I did not see that people already had a hold of the starter box. Jeez. Yeah, they shipped that out too. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'll, I'll, I'll say two things in one. It's nothing like what I expected it to look like. And it's amazing. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. Especially after seeing, um, oh geez, I feel terrible. I can't even remember what the, uh, the ultramarines private Mark's name is, but after seeing oh. him, yes, Goldman, thank you. I, this is not what I was expecting the line to look like, yeah. but not disappointed at all. Yeah, not even a little bit. I, like, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's been, like the only like caveat I have is whenever we saw his stat line mm -hmm. and see that he's a little more combaty than Gulliman, where yeah. Gulliman looks a little more opposing in combat with the flaming sword and all. No, I don't disagree. Um, I think one of the big things for poor Goleman is he was never meant to wield that damn sword, so I don't yep. think he's very good at it. True. He's more of a military mind than a I'm going to go fight somebody yeah. mind. Uh, so I, I'm absolutely getting this guy. Um, yeah. Again, yeah. he's going to go right alongside my Goleman, which is also 
what I consider to be one of my best painted models. This guy's a cloak, so there's no chance that's going to happen again. <laughs> Never know. Never know. Lightning can strike <laughs> twice. What uh, what helmet you like? What head you like? Ooh, that is a good question. See, personally, I think just the hood, but you can still see his face. I think that's probably the winner for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's either that or nothing on his head, but like, I I can't imagine putting a helmet actually on this model. Yeah. I, a, I, I, I know a lot, some people griped about Gullman's face. I, I, I think really if like that's it. the sculpt they're going to give us for the faces, you just got to learn to love it, in my mind, you know? I mean, I love it. Uh, whenever I yeah. saw it, I had no, no doubt in my mind I was putting the, the helmet on. So, so between me, it's either going to be with hood or without hood. No helmet, mm -hmm. especially no... Pow, no elbow. Yeah, no, right? I agree. <laughs> I agree. No wings, no wings. All right, moving along. Abandoned ship. Ken and Beastmen flee the death of a space hawk in guilty. Um, so I want to bring this up just because uh, not only do they have my my uh, my kin in there, uh, rock and stone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, uh, they have my new favorite sculpt of any uh, Votan with the, the uh -oh. brass knuckles. <laughs> okay, to be fair, yeah. That, with the that's black good. Eye. With the black, so he's been beaten right. up, and he just didn't learn yet. Right? No, never figured it out. It's fine. That, he's uh, got a semi okay eye. It's good. Yeah, he's got one good eye. That's like from uh, Three Hundred. Uh, you know that movie exactly. came out before he was born. That's... <laughs> hey, now I know that one. Come on. <laughs> um, I like the uh, <clears throat> the AI guy. The uh, oh yeah, no, the inclusion like, uh, of them in the squads is great. You got to go over there, guys. You got to yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm a robot, but you're the expendable one. You go. Well, that's one thing that I really find entertaining is like, in the in the codex, they explicitly state they were they were viewed like equals. Right. Yeah. There's no distinguishing difference between them or anyone else, but all of the models have them in servant servant roles. Oh, uh, <laughs> just secondary roles. Yeah. Well, no, so I like, see what you're saying. So you yeah. think the uh, the berserkers, okay. the mole launcher. There's the one that holds a mole launcher, and she comes with one of these guys mm -hmm. to just hold her shit. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, also, I love this paint scheme. The, the orange and black. Yeah, no, that orange does look great. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we got 40K Beastmen before we got more AOS Beastmen. Regular Beastmen, yeah. Um, weird. But I don't think I'm disappointed and I don't think the AOS crew will be either because let's be honest except for like a bionic arm or two um they, you could just put these right into the unit what one of them's wearing a gas mask he stole it off of a skaven all right done um most of these like you swap out the chain sword from the unit leader like welcome to your new Beastman unit in AOS probably so nothing wrong with that oh no I forgot to unmute um, uh -oh. okay so we'll go back real quick here so <clears throat> now that you've all gotten a list of my side of it yeah yeah so like I said I I'm interested to see what the size of the Agridon Lancers are um, they did state yeah. that they will be replacing the Saurus Knights um, yeah. Natural um, evolution. Natural evolution. Yeah, no, it's great. Size difference will be impressive, I'm sure. Especially if you go and you take an old croc or the old uh, Karn Fiend or whatever it is. Uh, this, the old ones used to ride the much larger dinosaurs. Oh, the, the, uh, the carnosaurs. Yes, the Carnosaur. And you put that beside this. Like, the old metal one's probably going to be the exact oh, yeah, same the size. And it's going to be sad. Big. Yeah, exactly. They're probably about this size. Yeah. Um, and as I said, I really like this this white skin tone. Skin. Yeah. Um, I don't think it says it here, but they were... Uh, during the reveal, they were talking about how this is actually lore-based. Oh. Um, okay. That, like... <clears throat> Once you like, if you're born like an albino, you essentially you're like on your way to a scar vet. Like, okay, like, you're kind of just already school? considered a cut above the rest. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we said, 
Croxagores are great until you look at the wolf yep. spawn. And they're just better. They just are. It's not much of an argument. I just don't know. I really wish they would have just given them both the same face. Because I know what's going to happen. The Croxagore are going to be 220 for 30, or for 3. And yep. the Croxagore Warp Spawn are going to be 280, and they're just going to be too expensive. Oh, you're right. You're probably right. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Dang. Um, Why'd you have to hit me with that truth? <laughs> oh. <coughs> Never going to get to see these guys on the table, actually. Oh, I hope I do. I hope we're both completely wrong and I get to see them on the table all the time. Honestly, out of 90% of my um, predictions, I, I hope I'm wrong most of the time. So that's... <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so I absolutely love the Source Warriors. The uh, the only thing is, I wish they would have went back to separate um, Saurus Warriors and Temple Knights. Oh, they, yeah. They're, they're called what? Saurus Guard? Yes, Guard and Temple, Knight. temple so Guard. So it's Saurus Warriors and, temp and Saurus Guard. They got rid of the Temple Guard when they switched from Lizard Men to Seraphon. Okay, there we go. Um, but, like, what I would have liked to have seen would be... And it looks like, hopefully, that's the way it is here. Is the Saurus Warriors are ten? Yeah. Come out with the Sor or the Temple Guard with armor, right? Put them in units of five. That's probably the correct, correct option. Yeah. Uh, and we get the new Slon and the um, I forget what the Skink Riders are called, but we get them too. I wonder if they get a Spit Attack. They have to, right? At least the one style mount has to. I would say the, the large flare. It's got to. Yeah. <laughs> and these are nowhere near as far out as I thought they were going to be. No, definitely not. I mean, it keeps with the theme pretty well. Well, I'm just saying, like, even, like, the release. Oh. The release. I guess like, not. Like, yeah, I was it's coming up. Them, I was expecting this to be the fall release. Yeah. Uh, so for me, in my head, it was, this was going to be fall release. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, the next two books, the death books were going to be, I forget when I said they were going to be, but probably beginning of the year or something, either uh, winter or beginning of year. Yeah. And then next year was whenever we were going to get, um, humans. Yeah. So here's going to be a fun prediction we could try and make. Are we just going to rip through all the books and have like this weird, six to 12 months where we go, nobody's going to get a new book because we all know that fourth edition's on the way. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be a strange time yeah. where we all kind of sit there and go, do we all kind of know what's going on? <laughs> yes. You, you mean that book didn't come out last week and I have no idea what it does yet. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So speaking oh. of that, the next two, uh, the next two books and almost last, um, yeah. One sec here. Ugh. Um, so we got the announcement of both uh, OCR Bone Reapers and Soul Blight uh, are getting their yeah. books. Um, I don't think anyone was predicting Soul Blight to get their books so quick. No, it feels like they just got theirs not too long ago. Um, now, However, that being said, it is pretty out of date. Yeah. Um, so we got our hero on foot for OCR Chrome Reapers, um, which, yep. since it's a newer line, it's not the end of the world. No, it really isn't. And um, that line doesn't have, like, so many foot heroes that you're sitting there going, which one's this? And, and the so. one thing I will say about that is, while it has a limited number of units, I will say that the units, the unit roles are well-defined. Yes, there is no overlap between them. That's for certain. Right. Um, yeah. He's okay. The Osiric Bone Reaper thing isn't my isn't my style. Okay. Um, but I think he's fine. I think he falls well within line. I don't know about the weird skeleton fingers coming out of his head. That might be a step too far. Yeah, it is getting a little on the side of weird, which is odd. Just knowing the lore of this whole and not group. the right, not the right kind of weird. 
Right. Not like Evil Dead weird, more like you're running out of ideas weird. Or you were sculpting this at 2.30 and didn't know when to stop. Well, they were sculpting it at 2.30 and at 3 o'clock it was due. Okay? <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, but he's very happy with this face. Whatever he's making, yeah. So find a find a profession that'll make you that happy and you know there we go if only we could all be so happy <laughs> and then we got uh not only a foot hero but we got a named foot hero yeah avia volga the outcast who's now going to be brought back into the ring here yeah i it's fine what was the the box set name i can never remember Cursed, uh, yeah. Is she just a cursed city model that we never got? Oh, basically. In yeah, in any of the continuations that we should have got, and now we just get her, and that's why she's named. Probably, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I hated to be the one to say it, but like, the hat's too big. The hat is too big. Way too big. Um, yeah. she should have more hair that also turns into bat. Oh, we already did that. Never mind. We yes, we did. Yes, we did. Now that you say it. <clears throat> so, actually, if you scroll down on that page, she's that that vampire's there. So, yeah, oh, still the best, best. That's why it's still the the titles page. So, <laughs> yep. Um, one sec here. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, again, I, I really feel like they shouldn't have just, and I've, I've said this almost every book, they shouldn't have just defaulted to everyone gets a foot hero. Uh, I'd say most armies don't need a foot hero. Yeah, most of them probably don't need another one at this point. Um, again, I still say they should have made their, in Cur City, there's vampires that are that have like the wolfy bottoms and the wolfy arms. like her yeah no they should have made a full unit of them and they should five man of them three or five man make them battle line so you can run a vampire army if you want yeah no that's not what they did in fantasy but we're not in fantasy anymore because True. to me i don't know about you but like i feel like all these wolfy vampires feel separated from yeah. everything else in the book you're not wrong. Um, I have to say, back whenever we got the, uh, what was it, the War Cry War Band? Or, uh, yeah. The, the yeah, those war four war. vampires. Had you made some of those just units, I would have run an all vampire army. That would be probably my death army currently. <laughs> well, like, <clears throat> I was jazzed the, for that. That's what the Blood Knights are. I, mean, that's... I know, but it's not enough. Not on its own. We need our foot, foot version uh, as well. So I said, I'm, I'm glad to have these books out. Uh, we'll have to see where I am in my hobby in my hobby journey. Right. If I pick up the Whatever, they... book right away or not. Right. No, I understand. Pick up cards. Probably. If they ever come out, the KO cards still haven't come out, bastards. Have they really not? Jeez. Or the dice. Not that I got hmm. the dice, but. I think the corn stuff came out. Yeah, what it came out right the fucking way. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving along here. Look at the first humans of City of Sigmar. Ta da! Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I know a lot of people kind of dunked on them. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a fan, personally. I mean, same. there's a lot of detail there, which is somebody who realizes this is your base footline troop is a little right. scary, but they're cool. I like them. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Like I said, I mean, it is you. Everyone that was kind of griping about them, you have to remember this is your battle line. These are your mm -hmm. source, these are your source warriors. You know, like <clears throat> these are your zombies. Like you don't want them so badass that you're going to be upset whenever you're removing twenty in one round of combat. I was going to say when you have to paint sixty of these, right? Uh, but no, and again, like for anyone that's been listening to the show any for any prolonged period of time. One of the things that I've been kind of griping about is the um, the three D renders have been lackluster to me. Like they've been very 
what I've been calling them, Hero Forge. <laughs> right. And um, so with that, it's like finally seeing it in action. I'm like, okay, these look like gritty survivors to me. These look yeah. like there's enemies at the gates. Yeah. And um, you know that they're all worshipping Sigmar still. Like, they all still have that pilgrim almost feel to them. I um, I like it. I'm into it. All right, so I'm excited to see people paint them. That is fun. So. Oh, geez. And these are still going to come in in autumn. Jeez. Right. So that's, that's things like crazy. So oh. Again, my hopes dashed that these were going to be the four, 4.0 launch box. But uh, sadly, no. Uh, they will be out. They're the fall army. Um, they could still be. We don't know yet. I true. mean, let's be honest. It's going to be Stormcast. But it the, could be I these guys. Like, I'll say the problem is, is they're not elves, so they're not getting a release that quickly. Again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so they gave us this thing, and they're like, oh, if you know what the symbols are, you know stuff. I'm like, uh, nerds. Yeah, not me. <laughs> I don't know the symbols well enough. Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, so we got summer, we got the new Joe's Handbook. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> Getting a little tired of the six-month thing already. Six um, it was a cool idea at first, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, what was that? So it was worth a shot. No, it was. It was. Whenever I was hitting up tournaments quite a bit, that I mean, that year you helped, you went with me to a lot of tournaments. Yeah. I'd have been okay with it. Now it's too fast. Right. I feel like I just right. kind of got the hang of the last one, and it was time to move in. And you like, know? It, yeah, I, I even if they wanted to try and do like, I don't know. I, I don't know how you do more than one a year. I, I think one a year is the correct way of going about it. Um, especially since I know I'm not going to a lot of tournaments between now and this summer. I'm sitting here going, I think I've gotten a good, what, tournament-wise, maybe eight games. No, ten games of tournament Warhammer in. I might get 15 for this season. And all the studying of that book I did will be nothing. Yeah. So yeah. I'll yeah. use that book like 25, that. 30 times, and that'll would, be it. I would like to see them go back down to once a year and just release yeah. a supplemental book. Just come out with one at the six-month mark that has a couple more battle plans. Yes, I agree with that because, let's be honest, some of the battle plans are a miss. Some of them are big hits. And so every once in a while, just come out with a supplement book with three hits. Not like a smattering of another 12 that five will be good. Just give me three good ones well, so during the six months. What you could do is <laughs> every once in time. Hold on. Mm -hmm. That was a fore foreshadowing there. <laughs> oh, no. Um. Because I like like we ranked back. I, I can't find the episode. I tried looking for it, but where we actually went through and we ranked stuff, like yeah, Fondia ranked almost dead last. Yeah, yeah, it did. Let's combine Fondia with the battle plan book, and any other sort of if you want to print the battle scroll or whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah, there you go. Update points. Yep, there you be go. nice. I mean. To be honest, those points updates should probably just be an FAQ that anyone and everyone can get a hold of. Especially as a lot of folks, myself included, watch, especially whenever a 40K, uh, uh, their once every six month book comes out and it sells out immediately. Yeah. And then you hop on eBay and they're selling for dumb money. Oh, yeah. Because you can't even buy that book right now on GW site. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I mean, I think I still think that's the best way to go. Also, I know I'm in the minority of the community here. <clears throat> I really want the the special rules of the GHB to pull back a little bit. Instead of them being half to a third of like the battle 
uh, the battle tactics, like, do you ever mm-hmm. do champions? No. You are not win this game. Do you have two? Uh, no, no, I just have the one. But hell, guess what? You might, you might win this game. <laughs> Yeah, I How's have to go against you there personally, but yeah. Right, but again, like I said, I mean... Cause now, was, if we go to a once-per-year cycle, might agree with you more. Right. But while we're on the sixth month, I'm enjoying well, that. Well, let me ask. So, okay, so yeah. let's say um, you switch over to corn. Yeah. And the next one is all about wizards. Sure. Yes, and I'm going to feel very sudden, bad if I'm... Like, if it hits me as hard as a Giants player is hitting me right now. Right. Is so, being hit right now. Yeah. So it's it's like, okay, you have to cast two spells this turn. Yeah. Okay, well, I can't get that one. Uh, yeah. wizard has to stab another wizard. Oh, I can't get that one. Like. Yep. No, there will be 50% of them I can't even get. I right. agree with and, you. And I think yep. that's wrong. That's the wrong way to do it because if it was something that every army could do, okay, you're really kind of forcing people into a mold. Um, right, but considering that not every army can do everything, mm-hmm. um, like so we'll we'll talk about KO. I think TLDR KO yeah. is in a good place, but we'll see whenever Gleason champions are gone and sharpshooters gone. Right, sharpshooters gone, and then we go back to the time of beasts or and it's all do you have a monster now and they go well we got a boat that's not a monster oh oh (laughs) same thing with fire slayers like right now fire slayers are doing well because you can't shoot that rune father right what happens when that rune father's dead in turn one that's true it's true like i said i mean it's it it i think it's a little too far and again like i said i know you disagree that's fine um, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be one that I love that you're going to be like, absolutely not. I'm going to be like, no, Matt, you don't bad. know it. You have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, and I'll be exactly. Like, That's because I beat you. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, so moving along. We got our new um, Warhammer Underworld starter set. Yeah. Uh, with probably the coolest looking Stormcast model. Um, yeah, it's hard to argue with. Well, if I ever bring a, um, what is it, Knight Arcanum that everyone brings? Yeah. Uh, here's my Knight Arcanum. <laughs> Don't blame you. Yeah. Uh, I and can. then, just to make sure that they didn't fall behind any, Zinch came out and also hit a Grand Slam with this weird, gaunt looking motherfucker. Yeah. Um, why not? Like cool. If you want to do a foot hero, that's how you do a foot hero. Right there. That's and then you have like these awesome Zinchian horrors, like this little butthole with an eye. <clears throat> yes, yes. <laughs> little things like that. Yes, the subtlety. I mean like you can tell that this is still a pink horror. It's just like well now it's completely split in two with teeth. Here's one right. that's like has a little bit of a Zangor coming out of it. Like it it, it to I... me, like one of the things that, that I I don't like about the current pink horror line mm-hmm. is they're so uniform. No, that's fair. These definitely have the I uh, Eldritch horror right. going for them. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think Zine should be. Like you should be reminded that these things aren't just running at you, they are slopping forward while they're changing into human feet, into horse feet, into wings, like Right, yeah, and it's just actually a horrifying thing to watch. You're not just right. shooting at it because you know it needs to die because it's chaos. You're like, please, don't let it touch me. I'm terrified as to what the dice will roll <laughs> when it gets here. And it also comes with a war, war, uh, under, underwards, underwards thingy here. Moving on. Yep, <laughs> one of them theirs. So, we won't talk about it too long. This episode's actually already going a little longer than I was expecting, but uh, not... You're, d- you're hanging it there. You're doing yeah. good. 10th um, edition announced. Yeah. Uh, along with new kind of boring Terminators. I was kind of expecting a little more. It's it's amazing. just a refresh, I yeah. think, is the it's biggest fun. thing people need to remember. Yeah. And uh, they definitely could have done something more exciting for the refresh of models. <laughs> That's for certain. 
just make the armor a little bit more ornate. Yeah, no, no I agree. Change, These are change. supposed to be full-on relics that are holding a piece of the Emperor's armor in them. Right. And it's 40k, so why are these not basically cathedrals that if you're walking through an Imperial Guardsman line, they just okay. stop to pray when right. they see it, right? right. <laughs> um. no. So, uh, with that being said, like, I was, uh, I've been reading the articles that are coming out with these, I listened to the interview and everything, and also, with the Terminators, same thing with the, uh, the Termagants, at they call them a glow up. I just think like, no, you just re sculpted them, man. Isn't even... Right. But I don't, um, think, I don't think they need anything. I think no, like... I don't think they need anything that crazy. You're gonna paint a lot of gaunts whenever you're doing that army. Yeah. Um, one thing I am curious about is obviously in the Terminator line, we're seeing all the Storm Boulder shooty Terminators. What about my Thunder Hammer Storm Shield guys? I'm very curious what those look like. I think they could be pretty fun. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's. So. Um... I, I really like the new the new way that they have the wool set up. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. I love the idea that, yes, just do what you did with AOS. It worked so well. I can be at work during a slow moment, stop and be like, what's that unit do again? Right. Whenever Matt sends me something, <laughs> look it up. Oh, I understand what it does. I don't, even though I don't have the book. I can have an intelligent conversation about this or mm -hmm. no, this looks really good. You know, I think I could use a unit of this for my army. Let me hop online and buy one now. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I mean, I you know they've gotten so many people that way. Um, oh, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, I'm pretty sure almost all of my armies outside of dwarves <laughs> have been started because I was reading the war scrolls. Just because you're sitting there with the app and you're just like, well, I mean, I know I can guarantee you that's why I have an orc army. There you go. That's so. all it took. <laughs> um, so, okay, so with that being said, I first off, I love it whenever they do the index refreshes. Yeah. No, the the eighth edition full index is a great time. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm just. It, well, speaking of, like we were talking about, um, uh, the, the Adeptum one a little bit at the beginning here. Yeah. Uh, when I played my Custodes. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed it. Good, uh, good. Thanks to, A, us ignoring secondaries entirely. I was going to say, that was one thing I noticed. We did it, Adeptum won't, is I feel like so many people just haven't played 40k that know what he won, they really do. The secondaries, which I, mean, I think helped a lot of the games, the, honestly. The secondaries are a cool. neat idea. Yeah. If everything didn't have its own textbook of, of information. Of know, rules to get it done. Yeah. And that's a big part of playing a game of 40K right now. Because there are 45 of your 100 points or 90 points if you... Because painting is supposed to be 10. So you could just kind of win based off secondaries. So it's a weird way to play playing without. Not that I think any of us really minded playing without because we just wouldn't have a good time. Yeah. I mean, again, the last but time I tried it playing, could be simplified. <clears throat> I tried for playing uh, with Neil. Yeah. Trying to incorporate the terrain rules. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. God, yeah. Like, I, I know people say that they're a step in the right direction. Maybe if you fully understand them and just have them as second nature. Right, yeah. Um, it, 40K has not become a game that I think you can just have be a secondary game if you want to play it with all the rules involved. yeah, It's got to be your primary game. I love the idea of Combat Patrol. Yeah, it's a cool idea. We'll see Go out, time. buy a box, you and your buddy can play. That's great for anybody new to the game. You just point at it and you say, you pick up that box. I already own another box. We'll be good to go. We can start playing immediately. Right. Or hell, even, hey, I want to kind of roll some dice, but I don't have time for a 2004 game. That'd be great too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my only concern is like, so what well, kind of dawned on me whenever they showed the Votan one, they showed the Terminator guys, which currently are not very good. Okay. So they're in... 
So let's assume they're not going to be improved much in 10th edition when their index comes out. Yeah. So now I'm stuck with, out of my three units, one of them isn't good. <laughs> That's my only concern. Uh, if everything's well-balanced, everything's put together, then, hey man, it's awesome. Right. Now the only thing I'm worried about is getting the Grey Knight uh, and Death Watch. <laughs> yeah. There's, oh man, uh, such a such an Achilles heel for them. It'll be interesting, yeah. That that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so like I said we'll. Oh, and then I, I didn't realize they were show the Terminators. So here's the article showing Terminators again. Um, right. It, I'm I'm super happy that they are now the same size as Primaris, or a little bigger. Yeah, Primaris aren't just towering over them. Yeah. Because uh, that was always my big problem, because I love Terminators. I've always loved Terminators. Uh, that's why I first got into... Well, I wanted to get into Grey Knights mm -hmm. because of Terminators, but they were so broken whenever I was into the game. I was like, I can't do that to my opponent. So then I switched over to um, Space Wolves, because they're another easy access to... Um, it's all those kind of fun toys, yeah. Uh, but again, I'll tell you also, running Terminators and Thunderwolf Cavalry was a fun fun little stint. I'm sure it was, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so, like I said, we'll see. Now, it was funny, I was watching, I was reading some comments on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And there was the, the Grognard that uh, was pretending like he's been playing the game for 30 years. Uh -huh. And saying, like, oh, I liked it better whenever you rolled 2d6 for defense. And I was like... I didn't comment because I didn't want to get involved. But I want to be like, so you mean reroll fail saves? Is that what yes. you like? Do you like rerolling yeah. fail saves? <laughs> he, back in the ye old days, you know, seventh, uh, where it was twos and twos rerolling. Right. Um, that no, was no, your save. That wasn't good. It was when you got to roll two dice with a save. You need to fail both of them. Right, right. Idiot. So oh, exactly what not I said. Not <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so here's another look at the... Um, this is April 3rd. Uh, the new... The anatomy of a new data sheet. Yeah. Um, I love the idea of the objective control being a... Uh, stat. No, I agree. I agree. I have a feeling we're going to see that in yeah. AOS. I Actually, I think a better one to look at if you want to look at the new scroll would be the one from today, April 4th, uh, just how tough are Terminators. I have that one Because that is a full scroll and how it will look for all of us. Well, hopefully not, because there's no Thunderhammer on there. Well, I, right now, for if you want to buy Terminators, it's Terminator or Assault Terminator. Uh, so I think that's why. Yeah. Okay. I've not lost hope yet. We're good. Also, uh, if you read this, it says Assault Cannon has devastating wounds as part of its rules, and I am so excited to see what the heck that even yeah, means. What do, you, uh, what do you... Okay, so what do you... Take a guess. What I think that it? is sixes to wound do mortals, personally. Something like that. See, I was thinking sixes do more... Do an additional hit. Okay, maybe. So the only reason I don't think it's that is because they have an AP of zero. Assault can is supposed to really supposed to shred things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah you're so right. well, I think it's just with an, with six attacks. You're, you're only bit, you're well, maybe one, maybe. Yeah, I don't think you get it often. But it is strength six now. Right. Well, yeah, I forget what strength it was. That's, if it was five or six, I want to really say five. it's six now. Okay. Well, I, I'll try whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, chain vis being anti-vehicle plus three interested to understand that a little bit better yeah well they, did you talk about oh. that in the anti ability okay you're right um, you're right so that counts as a critical wound yeah um <clears throat> and they say it's similar to devastating wounds so okay we will see yeah um, no but i think just the way that it's laid out for everyone to see yeah. i yeah this looks good. I can hand this to somebody who's never played the game before. Mm -hmm. And I think they can get the idea. Like, it won't be the most easy thing in the world. 40K is right. not a simple game. But I think I can hand somebody new four of these for if we're playing a combat patrol or something like that. And they'd, they'd be able to make it through. So, um, big win. Whoever came up with this idea, good job. So Keep far, excited. 
I'm yeah. um, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Yeah, I All agree. Right, so we're almost done here. So we got uh, the the. Um, I don't know if you've seen the article that came out today about uh, Ivia Volga. I missed that one. Um, so she's either going to be worthless or bullshit, and there's no middle ground. No in between. Um, so, Any mod. Yep. Mm. Anemus Bane. Interesting. If any enemy monsters are within three inches of this unit, this unit counts as ten models for the purposes of contesting objectives. In addition, while an enemy monster is within three of this unit, the attacks characteristic of that monster's melee weapons is one. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you playing Beast Claw Raiders <laughs> and you've got three stone horns coming for me? That's cute. They get to swing once. It's dumb. <laughs> I love it. It's dumb. It's dumb. The run. I want to know, like, I'd be like, "Hey, Gito, do you remember the 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 monster General's Handbook that you released <laughs> two General's Handbooks ago?" Yeah, you know those I rules need... don't work anymore, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love it. I swear, anytime something comes out anymore, it's like it does something against monsters. I'm like. Fine, I'll stop taking monsters. I get it. <laughs> Look, between that and now I've just read the needling fangs yes. part of her war scroll, where that one attack that you get it's is it awesome. minus, minus one to hit? hit. Yes. And did you make the mistake of hurting her? Sorry, this attack <laughs> is now 12 swings. Oh, She's yeah. going to be so good. And now, whenever she ends up being 400 points because I'm so happy with these rules, I'll be wrong. See, but... here's, here's the problem. You know what, what is a really good way of taking care of Omega? Hmm. 100 zombies. Who's probably I mean, going to cost less than her. <laughs> probably. However, <laughs> I don't have to paint 100 zombies That's if I true. just paint her. That's so, so, you so have, if they came out with the who's the real winner here? One. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and lastly, uh, news that I was pretty happy. The uh, first time I actually was excited to see uh, Cursed City rules. Yeah. Solo play if you bring um, Gotrek, Altharian, uh, or Gargus. It's a cool idea, especially in a world <laughs> post-COVID. We have a lot of solo play games out there. Smart of GW to say, hey, we realize that sometimes you just need to pass the time. So here you go. It's now, very I, cool. I will say, instead of Gardas, they should have put Bastion. I think you're probably right. I mean, that's about he's about the same points as, as uh, Gotrek, so. Right. Unless this is levels of difficulty. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elfarian's middle, and then, yeah. yeah Gotrick's uh, easy. <laughs> Elf Gotrick is medium, and Gardas is hard. <laughs> there we go. That's why you've cracked the code. All right, let's see here. Okay. Palette cleanser. Um, so we have March 7th. Oh, give me a second. Get down to there. You, you go ahead before me, I think. So this is a stubby little arm in either a rubber or leather glove. Okay. And its hand is lighting up. Oh, I see it now. I have a lot of conflicting... <laughs> like, there's a lot of conflicting things coming from here. Okay, this one I think is easy. This is obviously a priest for... The cities of Sigmar. What's what's this? What's this stuff right here? This here? This is just... I've got a lot of heavy clothes on. I'm a very... A lot of priestly robes everywhere. Now, I know exactly what you're going to want to argue. Is that is a dwarf arm. And that's why it's short and stubby. So, I want to say Demon Smith. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I'm not do. going to, though. I'm not going but Demon to. Smith. Fine. I'm going to say... I'm going to say this is something stupid. Okay. And it's like... Um, 
it's like a, it's some sort of like Necromunda thing where it's a guy reaching mm-hmm. through like one of those protective barriers that has gloves in them. And okay. I don't know why, I don't know why there's OSL in the hand then, but okay. But that explains what the bump is. That explains why the wrist is like this mm-hmm. and flaring out immediately. And it only goes out a little bit. Maybe, maybe. So chalk me up for Necromunda bullshit. Moving along. I've, I've put yeah. Uh, March fourteenth, double spears with little runes on them. Yeah, uh, not entirely certain. Um, these you could convince me are something dwarven. However, uh, I really don't know if they are or anything. They're fire slayers if they're dwarven. No, I mean. But <laughs> when it was painted with all the cross hatching, as I've been used so much, that to me the cross hatching says Warcry. You're probably yeah. No, you're right. And that's why it doesn't necessarily look like any one thing. Yeah, you're probably right. I think it's gonna be like I think it's going to be some sort of like one of those like kind of like the jade. Warriors, where they're like a little bit elegant, but they're in the savage lands, and that's yeah, it's not a bad one. All right, move along. Not a bad one at all. March twenty first, hammer with metal wrapped around it. Yeah, hammer with metal wrapped around it. Some sort of ogre. I would assume so. Um, yeah. The... Is this iron guts being redone? No. Um... Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. They don't want to do that. That's You're it. probably right. <laughs> but still. They're not elves, so they're not really doing it. But um, so we I, we know it's destruction. Just because of that band of metal around the end and it's made of yeah, stone. Yeah, uh, just so the way it looks. That band obviously. is almost identical to the band that's on the, um, the column uh, flail. From the uh, the gate wrecker. Oh, so do you but think this is? I don't think it's that big. I didn't get the sense it was that large either, just because of the bolts and everything that I, we are seeing. So I would say it's either something ogre, mm-hmm. or somehow we've got we're getting a new man crusher model. That's what I was gonna say. New mini kit of some sort. It's the I only mean, way I could get there. The line is two model kits. Do you think they could refresh both of them? Like Maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right, let's move along to the 28th. Yeah. It's an odd one. I, I think, think we're missing something here. I think it's... Uh, I think it's upside down. Is that what it is? It's I think this is down. a necklace. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're right. This is some sort of necklace or again, something like that, and you're thinking war cry, war cry right? Yep. yep. Okay. Ain't no way this one ain't. All right, and then we got gotcha. sight from today. Yeah. It's a very large Reaper scythe. Um, it's Nurgle, I think, of some sort. Oh. Just, be- huh. Just because, well... I mean, it could be something for uh, the upcoming Soul Blight. You're locked. You're locked in there. Fine, it's Nurgle. The only other thing could be be Soul Blight, but I think it's I'm Nurgle. I'm going to say Soul Blight's uh, under, or, Underworld to Warband. Okay, okay. Take a Nurgle, then. Because I think they're at, like, I, I think they're, like, at the end of the line with the uh, with the lot, with the, the new model releases. I think all we have is third-party games at this point. You might be right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's hop over here. Um, why don't you tell me about um, your time at Adeptimal? My time at Adeptimal. Uh, it was a great week- weekend to just go hang out with friends, chillax. It was, it was a lot of fun, honestly. Um, game one, I got to play against uh, Terry, who I got to meet there at Adept Wall. Uh, pretty cool guy, local in Columbus area. Or not Columbus, geez. Cincinnati, Akron area. 
I don't know oh, anything Ohio, about the state. I just, <laughs> it's all flat over here. And all the maiden cities have a C in their name. Look, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to get used to it. It was a great game with him. Um, it was a lot harder fought than it, I thought it would be. What'd you play, um, by the way? What was that? What did you play? Oh, I played AOS. I guess I should have specified that. I was playing AOS. I got to take the Deepkin out the one and only time that I brought the Deepkin out. Um, and now I feel terrible because I can't remember what Terry was playing off the top of my head. Orcs. I don't know why. Orcs. Oh, no, he was playing Cool Boys. No, yes, he was playing orcs. It was just what fl- it's because I never actually got to play a real game against Scroll Boys before. Boy, do those little crossbows hurt. <laughs> you kill those immediately on sight. I'd like to point out that I said that was the only thing good in the codex whenever we <laughs> had someone we reviewed. They're like, no, they're pointed too high. <laughs> I, I'll admit I was wrong. You should take two units of nine of that and uh, <laughs> rip them into your opponent's face. Um, so immediately my one and only dart of three eels got thrown into that to rip it apart and get it out of there now. Um, which was a good option because after that I was in a pretty powerful position. I uh, was able to keep Terry off the objectives pretty much most of the game as I was able to just keep him on his side of the field for longer. Um, pretty bloody game. We didn't have a whole lot left by the end, but I just outscored him so much early game because of being able to keep them off middle. Um, I think that was one of Terry's first games in New Edition, though. So, so yeah, so big thing. Needed to learn lots, so really can't hold that against him. Uh, Next game I got to play against Chuck. I got to use my Empire Army that Neil had just printed for me. For the second time, it's gotten to come out. And the second time it's had to play against Elves. This time they were of the Dark Elf variety. Um, I scared them this time. I scared them elves and their broken always strikes first BS, but we didn't quite get there. Um, Quite honestly, I think I would have won the game, but Chuck had, I forget what the Vortex role was he was going for. Uh, He just picked up six dice and went, hoping for double sixes and got it and was able to wreck most of my army that was left. Had he favorite things to do. Had he not, uh, I think I just roll over in that game pretty easily. Um, yeah, because he destroyed like eight to nine hundred points in my army with that one spell. Yeah. So otherwise, I think I had him. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a uh, that's a rough army. Um, it is, but it's fun. Really enjoying the empire. I'm glad that that's the army I picked. Honestly. It's it's been a good time. I'm excited for Old World because of it. So, well, so that was actually I <coughs> wanted to want to talk about for um, uh, Adepticon. I got yeah. multiple unrelated sources, each stating that Old World will be announced at Warhammer Fest. Wow, and that'd be the, big with the plan to come out in November. Okay, so let's say we believe these. Yeah. Here's my question. A, first off, good job for the Warhammer team <laughs> pumping out as much work as they must have been pumping out, getting new molds ready because you got cities coming up. You've got all of the things you're going to need for Old World. Sure, this is Forge World, so it's a different branch. However, lots of work that would need to be put in. What does Game Work Games Workshop do next year? Like, legitimately, if both come out this year, if Tenth comes out, Cities comes out, and Old World comes out this year, what do they do next year? I'll like, tell you. they're gonna have to lay off Four the entire st- chaos. Doors. <laughs> <sighs> There's, <laughs> it seems too fast, just because. I mean, that's that's what we've been for the last like eight months. Right. Yes. It's just, it's too fast. They've got, they're doing too much and they're either going to surprise the crap out of us in 24 with something huge or they're going to, or they're going to, 
they're gonna fall yeah take a year off which if they do both i'm 100 percent down for here's fourth edition age of sigmar we'll see you guys 25 yeah. we're gonna rest on our laurels you good. know what <laughs> fine it'll help me out with any sort of product fatigue i got going on <laughs> after that big thing is that if they do keep going at a breakneck pace like that i look over at watsy and what's been happening with hasbro right now where they've been kind of throwing a lot of products into the fire to the point yeah. that they're overdoing it with the company. And I hope GW realizes they can't do the same thing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's a couple things that they've been avoiding that Hasbro has been doing. So hopefully that's true, design. but um, if they keep going too quick, I'm going to start worrying about them. Did, I forget if you were around whenever I came up with <clears throat> the way that they could actually pull old world off to a lot of people's expectations. No, I think I missed that. It is the most un-GW way humanly possible, so it's not... Not going to happen. Not yeah. going to happen. And you're going to have a reaction, even with me telling you this. Mm -hmm. They're going to release STLs. You're right. <laughs> I had a reaction. Because you and I both know... Right. Someone at GW at Citadel would lose their mind. I think I just heard James Workshop have an aneurysm. Just <laughs> someone just screamed in England. I can tell you that right now. But to be fair, it. to be fair, hate to say it, as a company that keeps upping the prices of models, as I keep watching the price of printers and the quality of printers. Yeah. Come CD's down. 8K? I've got models that were printed by an 8K yeah. now because of Neil. If, and I'm somebody who buys an army maybe once a year. So I easily drop hundreds of dollars once a year yeah. on this game. Boy, if I were to just make the investment one time in a printer, yep. probably save myself hundreds of dollars over the next five years just the next five years and i'd like to play this game even longer right well that's my biggest so, concern is like it's four right the problem is games workshop at a day is a model company they are not a rules company as much as we all think they are and we pretend like they are they're a model company no, to I sell stls would destroy <laughs> that company I, I disagree on both fronts um, okay now the way they would sell stls would destroy the company because okay. here what they do is they're going to get like here's 15 um i don't know what pistol ears i don't know sure. what are guys on feet on foot halberdiers just free free guild yeah free, free guard guild. yep here's a here's 15 unique free guild sculpts or stls 85 dollars yeah <laughs> and then it's like you can print 10 <laughs> right if they could find a way to put a limit on the number you could print right i think games workshop would get into that business right um like i said i i don't think i honestly don't think that's the way they're going to go but i think it's the only way that no. they could pull off everything and make everyone happy because even though there's people new into the hobby really don't know the 3d printed world i think it's right. pretty hard to have a like um, a journeyman and up not know someone with a 3D printer. It's, yeah, the world's small these days and the number of folks with a printer is going up. Now, I feel like a lot of folks get a printer, play with it for two to three years, and then because either A, it gets out of style because it's too old now in the world of technology, B, life happens, they just don't print enough, C, it needs maintenance and they're just not knowledgeable enough, so then they quit printing yeah. one of those three ways. But eventually we'll get to the point where everyone will know someone who's just dedicated to printing and is always running something. You right. just got to throw them money, some pizza, and the resin they need to print. You know, here's you're good. Pizza, here's some resin. Don't mix them up. <laughs> right. Here's I some pizza, the, resin. The I'm going to come over. Boxes. We're going to hang out one of these days. We'll paint models together. Like, it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. You print me these. I'll give you the resin and I'll paint whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like I said, 
I, I just don't know how it's going to work. Like, no one's going to pay eighty dollars, a hundred dollars for right 10 for a ten man squad. Yeah, no one's going to do it. No, especially we will eventually need... reach a tipping point. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially whenever you need eighty of them. Yes. Like, no, sorry, I'm not going to spend eight hundred dollars on my core battalion. Like, right. <clears throat> it's something that I think a lot of the friendly locals are noticing. Uh, I think everyone knows if you hop online these days, you can find GW product uh, without really trying to look for 15% off because yeah. that seems to be whatever the retailers can give. Right. My friendly local, if you pre-order anything through them, make sure you get that 15% off. Yeah. All the books I get through them now, they're smart. They make sure you're getting that. Yeah. Just things like that. Yes, GW is still going to be making money, but the places the individuals that won't right. automatically just assume the 50 percent off is just part of the price now yeah probably well, gonna get also, left behind i do think eventually at some point your flgl is going to start offering printer service as well oh a lot of them do right a lot, a of, lot them of them do so. yeah i think that's going to be just or there's at least a guy who's allowed to advertise, advertise, advertise in the store that he does it that guy just happens to be really good friends with the owner or is the owner. Um, all right. So you're, so that was what game one and game two. Yeah. Um, unfortunately you did not win your game. I did not. I Looking lost against very, Chuck. Very bad because, for us. Well, look, let's be honest. It wouldn't have been fair to play Chuck in a game age of Sigmar. I haven't lost him in over two years. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck, but I haven't lost you in over two years. Um, 40 K. Probably wouldn't have lost to him in that because I'd have been like, cool, we're going to play with full secondaries because <laughs> now I know you can't keep up. Yeah. Um, so that wouldn't have been fun. So I gave him the game where he had an advantage. However, I still got that close. Yeah. Oh, he should be scared. That's the, I'll that's... Get, That was game two with this army. Wow. Wait till game 10. I'm going to have him. That, uh, I call that the Rocky loss. Where you, yeah, where you get yeah. a taste. <laughs> yep, yep. And I'll just play him in Age of Sigmar next time. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Chuck. You lose. Um, yeah, so so our the the Neil Matt Chuck triangle continued. Right, um, yeah. I'll tell you, man, just KO is very strong against Sylvaneth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree. Um, I don't disagree. There's nowhere I mean, to run, nowhere to hide. Feels, everything feels good against uh, Ilarial. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, there. I had a couple games where she was clutch. MVP. And... Well, I had one game where she was clutch and two games where she was a burden, and and I needed okay. like eight hundred points back. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so then then I played Chuck with my Custodes versus his Dark Eldar. Okay. And uh, it was so funny. Like, I'm not used to losing any models with that army. Oh, wow. Okay. And he was able to, like, kill a unit of five man with two shields and then, like, essentially get rid of the shields from another unit. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> no oh, geez. Good. Yeah. That is very concerning very quickly. Yeah. Um, but... But then whenever I was able to swing back, the only thing that hindered me was just the, the damage not spilling over. Yeah, that is pretty big. I, I honestly, I do enjoy that part I of do. 40k. Um, <clears throat> there are times in Sigmar, maybe certain damage should do that, but I think it works so much better in 40k just yeah. because you're dealing with so many ranged weapons that can just six damage. I feel like what they should do... <clears throat> And again, as, as a non 40k player, I can be way off base. But and again, I understand that we have to like <laughs> rework everything. Oh boy! Right. Come on. You're all good, buddy. But no, just. Oh, um, I think melee should spill over. Just because it's more, it's it's less representative of. I attack you, I attack you, I attack you. Right, and it's it's, just... I've got this huge exodus swept through people. Right. I can get behind that. Yeah, yeah. And then I just think it should be more common to have a keyword for the ranged weapons that allows spillover. Like, if you have an explosive weapon, 
It just right. says explosive, and it hits whoever. It just does the amount of wounds of the unit. Yeah, it's not a terrible idea. Not <clears throat> at all. Um, like, why they decided to limit that. I remember whenever um, I was still in the store, whenever the first edition came out with those rules, mm -hmm. and someone brought a Vindictor and shot uh, a uh, Imperial Guard unit. Yeah. And the guy's like, well... You got him. Tommy's <laughs> real dead. Yeah. <laughs> Sarge, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I did 10 damage. You're like, yes. To, to him. <laughs> that guy in particular. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I said, I get it. But at the same time, like you have examples like that. You're like, no, that should never happen. <laughs> right. No, I agree. Hopefully uh, they'll get it right in this next edition. I'm excited to see how it goes. Yeah. I'm so excited to see where the rules are going to go. I'm actually like excited for 40K again. Yeah, I think which, a lot of people Which hasn't are. happened until, like, from from Votan um, up until to Votan now. nerf. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Votan to Votan nerf, and then now until release. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, now, I'll tell you, there was one last rumor I heard about 40K. Oh. Hit me with it. From some reliable sources. Mm-hmm. You know how there's been a lot of stuff going around just basically saying, like, hey, it's getting AOSified? Yeah. 40K's getting the double. Getting the double. 40K. Oh. You know, I I want to see 40K get the double just so I can hear about it more. Because personally... <laughs> I haven't heard enough. It keeps me I going. haven't heard enough. There's a reason I got that double turn me daddy shirt still, and it goes <laughs> with me to every single tournament. Yep. It's because we need the double turn. Oh, yeah. Double turn's the best. And especially when you can bait your opponent into taking a double turn. Oh, absolutely. It feels so good. Absolutely. It's I mean, so it's... good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, baiting someone into the double turn is not quite as easy whenever you don't get to strike first on both rounds of that turn. That is really <laughs> weird how that works. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's something very fun. And look. I know I'm just a dirty elf player, but there's yeah, a reason I, <laughs> I make sure my opponents know at the beginning of every turn <laughs> what the tides are doing, Yeah. especially yeah. after they say, I'm going to take the turn, and I stop and look them in the eyes and say, I'm still going to hit you first. Are you sure? <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see. I, I wonder what people are going to say whenever it, it drops. I mean, the, apparently it's going to be playable at Wormerfest. That's going to be very interesting. Um, so that puts it, what, Warhammer Fest is this coming summer? So that's in, like, June, is, July. Ooh, Warhammer Fest is the last weekend of this month going into May. No. Yep. Okay, the rules won't be out, but people will get to try it. Right. That'll be the way. It, okay, right. okay. The rules will be out June, July. This summer, yeah. Probably the last weekend of July. That's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, AOS came out 4th of July, so. There we go. Best time they could have ever released yeah. that. Freedom. That's why I, I, yeah. I, always, I always bemoan that I didn't paint my Stormcast in red, white, and blue. You know, you can always fix that. You'd think that, but I can't. I know. I know. It's okay. <laughs> I put the brush okay. towards it and it just flies I gotta out try. of my <laughs> Oh, weird. Weird how that works. All right. So here, next game. Next game. Uh, next game was with Alex in 40K, where I realized that I haven't played 40K in uh, about a year plus. Because I shot it some more, because he went, toughness five, and we looked at him like, you said what now? <laughs> I'd like to point out, custodians are toughness five. I understand, but I've played 40K for so long that orcs are just toughness four in my head. Yeah. And whenever he said this horde of 20 orcs is T5, I went, oh no. I have not deployed correctly for this <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, I hope for the double and, and uh, the, the tries will be. Oh, wait. Inside. They don't have that in this game yet. Okay. <laughs> wait. It's okay. It's coming. So you didn't win that one. No, no. He rolled over me. It was still a fun game. Um, Alex, I think, had only gotten to play a couple games of 40K yeah. with that army yet. So we got to half purposely set up some good skirmishes some good duels with yeah. some of his heroes and everything which was very fun i think um i think I'll you next time <laughs> i think he's knowledgeable enough in general at war games that he knows how to leverage hordes no i agree i he agree just loves hordes 
He does, doesn't he? <clears throat> I mean, the first Oof. time I fought Between him, between them, Staven and ugh. first time I fought him, he, he fielded 120 clan or uh, plague plague monks. That hurt just thinking about. <laughs> oh, I can't play horde armies. I really can't. No, I, it I hurts. Um, no, no, I don't want to be bent over a <laughs> table that long. I just. <laughs> Cause that's what it is. Oh, you want to play your horde army? You suffer and move it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll move back an inch. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your next? What was your next? Was that my time? last game? Was with you, buddy? Yeah. Uh, four in on the weekend. What'd we you played play? a round of conquest, yeah. which was a very interesting um, system. I'll tell you what. The idea that I'm sitting there excited for ones and twos is gonna mess with me forever <laughs> so no so, wonder you like that game so much in all honesty like i said i mean i i did get the impression that you thought it was fine but you're like it's not it's not a game i want to play all the time no it's not something uh-huh. that it didn't draw me in with this first one to the point that i need to get out there and get an army yeah it's a very interesting system um it seems like it's still an early company, so I don't think I'm too worried about it. Um, even the little bit that I got to see the difference between V1 to V2 rules, I think they made a great change in the right direction. And maybe it was the two armies we played. One of them just didn't speak to me. Yeah, However, I it's very old armies as well. <laughs> yes, yes. I think these were like the two first armies or something that came out. Fire and, the and personally, Kingdom. just from like a, a lore and the coolness of models, I'd probably play the Nord or is it Nords or yeah. Vikings or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they look like a fun army to me. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. It didn't grab hold of me real hard, but I enjoy the idea of it. And it's another rank of flank game, which now bastards have me playing <laughs> anyway. So like I said, for me, honestly, like I really liked it. Um, yeah, I liked it more than I thought I was going to. Okay, and I thought I was going to like it a lot. So right, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did like how deadly your monster felt, like when it was coming over. Yeah. I was worried, <laughs> um, and then you also weren't out of hope. Like even though you right. were on your back foot, you still had tools. Yes, yes, it wasn't uh, just over it, when that for happened. The record, Cole ended up winning. Yes, as it turns out, shooting somebody before they can hit you in the face, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Um, I thought at first, I, whenever I was looking at the armies, I'm like, these are not balanced. This is not going to be a good game. Right. And I thought it was excellently balanced. Yeah, actually, um, the knights that I was running had the speed, and I thought they would hit really hard. Yeah. But they did. they did. You were able to set up Oh, good enough screen yeah. that I couldn't just blow it through, which allowed us to have a good back and forth, and you were able to set up for your large piece to come in and fight me. Then, yeah, um, for me, like I said, my my highlights of the game, and I'm comparing this like directly to Warhammer Fantasy because um, I do think there's a lot of I do think they looked at Warhammer Fantasy and came up with stuff from there. Oh, I mean, let's be honest. Any games company nowadays coming up with a rank and flank that doesn't at least look at old fantasy, no. silly not to. Uh, but I think if you go back and watch the episode where we talked about fantasy, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it checks every box I had about an issue I had with it. Like, if you deploy wrong, you lose your game. Yeah, there was enough movement since you had two activations per unit. Not only do you have two activations per unit, but you set up your units as the game goes. Right. So you either have the advantage of outnumbering your opponent or being able to counterplace. Right. So I think that does a really good job of keeping you in the game longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, the other massive one is freedom of movement. Yeah. Yeah. Being able to have those two actions and literally action one is, okay, I'm going to now be facing 140 degrees the other direction. Right. It's glorious. And now I would like to move, or now I would like to charge. Right. That's pretty big, too. Right. So, like I said, I think there's a lot of freedom. I think it's, like, 
It takes everything I liked from, from like, fantasy. It takes, like, everything. Hell, it takes everything I like from, like, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Water. <laughs> and puts it together, you know? Um, so, like I said, I'll, I'm definitely going to get those armies painted up. Um, and Good. I'll force you to play every once in a while. That's okay. I can handle that. I can handle that, buddy. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, uh, like we both said, Adeptable was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to Adepticon next year or we're going to Adept Adult. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what's next. Yeah. I guess I'd have to host that one now that I'm yeah. an Ohioan too, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Or we'll we see. get everyone to your we'll place, see. you drug them, and then we drag them to Adepticon. Boy, that'd be difficult. You gotta fight Chuck and Neil then. No, no. no. Just wait for him to just pick wait. something up and put things down, and then you just. You're right. You're right. I'll just wait till he's mid rep, then I'll get him. <laughs> Don't. I hope he doesn't drop the bar on. It'll be okay. <laughs> That's why you wait. You wait for it. You wait for him to go start to go down, and then you. Oh, then... uh, does this smell like chloroform to you? Yeah. Done. Or what I'll do is like, I'll just be like, I'll just get him a raffy, paint it up exactly like his, and then be like. Hey, is this your Morathi? Whoops! And then drop it. And then he goes, what? And then that's whenever you get him with the rag. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I and think then, if you just throw it, he'll just start running where you threw it. So just throw it towards Chicago. There you go. And he'll and just with, chase. Then with Neil, we just have to trick him to go outside when it's raining and he'll just... <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. Poor guy. <laughs> that's what you get for me, you son of a bitch, Neil. I love Oof. you to death, but I'm going to insult you on my show. <laughs> you darn right you are. Good. Good. Um... No, thank you again, Neil, for having us. Um, yeah, it was a great time. Seriously, I, uh, always is. I, I tried know, to clean up guys. as much as I could on, in our downtime. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. He can do that. Nope, he wanted yep, to be host. Yep. No, it was a great time. I enjoyed myself. All right, always so do. We're, it looks like we're at under an hour and a half. Gonna bang out some books now. So, let's start off with the easy one. Slanesh. There was a book that came out for Slanesh. <laughs> um, the temptation thing will be very interesting to see how that works. Um, but I think that's me completing the sentences as big of a splash as that book will make for the time being. I still think they are paying for their summer that they got to have where they were the bee's knees. And I am very sad for that because that was the summer I was playing corn like crazy. And I thought it was just a wonderful time. And I miss those days. Yeah. Um, um, I have watched. So I watched Honest Wargamer. AOS Coach. Yep. When ASO, whenever Coach had on a guest. Okay. Um, Gorilla Game. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Warhammer Weekly. I still don't know how the damn thing plays. <laughs> I You're, like someone who uh, really enjoys the summoning mechanic and can really think through a lot of problem solving. Uh, Bill Souza will play this list new well with it. Yeah, I um, I think there are a few broken combos that they didn't realize. Yeah, and unintended so they are, things. They are not long for this world. They'll either get FAQ'd out or they'll get pointed out of existence. Yep. And other than that, I think they still don't know what they're doing with the book overall. I think it might be able to win. I think it's going to be probably mid tier if you're really like. I think it's going to be if you dedicate people, yourself to yeah. a mid tier book. Yeah. If if there's a coal of the sea for Slanesh. Yep. Which there are. I think you're going to be able to go three two pretty 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 casually, and four one will be your accomplishment. Yeah. Um, but again, I think the book is sloppy. Uh, I don't think it does what it's supposed to do. Whenever you look at, um, say, Nurgle. Right. Uh, the Zine. Yeah. Um, yeah, those books feel now the corn book even a little bit feels like they they represent the gods well enough, and I think they tried. I think all the temptation ideas were good. I don't know if they just didn't hit hard enough. No, I would not have. Uh, it's it's too much your opponent having a decision rather than you getting to make decisions, I think. Which well, is I mean, fun. We're playing an interactive you, game. You don't get something. I don't know. 
it's difficult because like I'm never going to offer my opponent the auto six on the six damage weapon that they missed right. with. You know. <laughs> um. So I would. So obviously, we're probably at some point going to have to do a Slanesh episode where we come up with our own battle tome. Yeah, I'll take the time. I'll learn the book well enough that I will write as good a list as I can, and then we can go through and say, okay, here's how it... Yeah, just like the old corn one. Yeah. We'll write it for them. Yeah. Because obviously they took notes from our corn episode for the corn book. Well, also, I don't know if you remember, um, one of the things that I said was to represent building rage, whenever you get your uh, blood tide points, yeah. you have abilities that you get based on the level. Right. Slanesh got it. Hey, they're working on it. They're now, working on it. Here's the thing is, like, it's fine. You yeah. have to balance the army around that. I, I you do. That. It, it, the, 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 the narrative doesn't make sense. Like, are they... I, I can't imagine that, like, Slanesh is sitting there blue-balling themselves. And this is uh, why they're getting these these stacking bonuses. Like, I don't understand, like... I no, know. I hear you. I hear you. It's interesting. Um, I almost think it should be the other way around. Okay. That they Where start you, with all the bonuses and they lose them as it goes, right. as they wear down. Yeah. Because they're... Just a broken army turn one or two. <laughs> right. And then by, by turn five, you're like... So a small actually, gust of breeze comes along, and that's it. They're gone. That's actually a pretty damn good idea. You have this unit, Somebody you write have this out. army, where, like, say Demonettes, mm. no save. Just no mm -hmm. save. And they're, like, 90 points for 10, and they get, like, three attacks, fours and threes, no Ren 1 damage. Um, I don't know. Figure it out. But, like, they're super Something cheap. crazy. Turn one, they all have... 3d6 charge always strikes first <laughs> just they're gonna come into you and if you can't screen ggs we're done now also i'm not a I, it might work out i didn't really dig too deeply into it but i i'm not a huge fan of their point generator yeah i think especially slanesh i feel like they got hit a little hard with some of the points um, all the books we've gotten over the last six months have been a little rough on points, and I feel like they need to loosen up just a little bit on a lot of the books as of late. Um, well, so I came up with a I came up with a, a a point generator that I think is too complicated. Okay, but a smarter man than me could could whittle it down. Go for it. Demons, you're not going to like this, but I'll explain it in a minute. Demons. Okay. Do not generate depravity points. Okay. Let me tell you why. Hit Slanesh me with. Slanesh is chained up. Right. So the depravity cannot build up within. It has to build up outside. Okay. So because there's going to be, because I'm just going to go straight damage. Right. Whatever your damage is, is how many depravity points you get, and then we'll base out, figure out how many points that can generate, and then come up with your summoning table from there. Yeah. Here's the restriction. What is Slanesh's number? Seven, I thought. No, I thought that was... No, that's no. supposed to be six. There's six? I don't think so they ever had a, num like a number, per se, because they were the newest god. Probably say they have six and nine. I'll You're probably right. I'm going to put ranges of six and nine exclusively in the book. That's done. <laughs> so anyways, <clears throat> a mortal unit wholly within nine inches of a demon hero generates depravity. Ooh, because interesting. Because they are being tempted by the demons. Interesting. Okay. And so then that way... You summon just demon after demon after demon after demon, 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 demon all over the place. Right. Again, they're all these, like, one wound, no save. And so, like, you're like, okay, can I overwhelm them to the point where I can actually win by the time my mortals run out? Right. And then, like, I don't know, like I said, there's just, I think there's, I think there's some, mm -hmm. I, I think there's some something in there. I think there's a diamond in that rough. 
there might be something like that. Now, I like the idea of playing around with the keywords some, because I feel like a lot of armies, a lot of War Scrolls, have five keywords on them, and we don't care about any of them. Sometimes we care about one. What you could do, which would be fun, but it's so much bookkeeping, I don't like the idea, is, is your opponent have the mortal keyword on their War Scroll? If so, you get more depravity. Because, Ooh, that's... yeah. But that's well, a lot I'm... more bookkeeping. Yeah, the only problem with that is is now, like, there's going to be very few armies that have mm. either mortals or demons. Oh, yeah, no. I'm saying you only ever look for the mortal right. keyword. Right, but yeah. I'm saying, like, if you go against a bloodletter corn army... That sucks. You're not going to get it. Yeah. Right. And so then that way, because that's one of the things is like, I think they've gotten summoning with the rest of the armies in a good place. I'm going to argue a little a for little the corn, bit. but I agree. A little bit. But they're doing a lot Compared better. Compared to where we were two years ago. Yes. Now, with that being said, we don't have an army that just summons en masse. Which is good, by the way. Unless you build for it. I guess. There are times that, yes, it'd be fun if you build for it. And it's like you've gone so far into the summoning build that you're not also an alpha strike build or something like that. Because I think that's where I struggle sometimes with the summoning is yeah. some books in the past have been just really good on their own. And by the way, why don't you just summon 500 points throughout a game? Right. If I mean, that was the problem with 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 Selenish the first time around is right the the units were good yeah and you could summon about another two thousand points if you were good at it yeah right and yeah. again so hell even if you go that route and you're like okay well demonettes are now two hundred points or you can summon them for ten points yeah so like okay well now it gives me less incentive to bring them at the start of the game but I'll summon them on that's for certain yeah I, I think there's some play there so yeah. anyways um. I'm going to give the book a C out of what I've seen. Uh, again, I could be tempted otherwise, but again, I'm going to go in an uneducated C. I I can't say I disagree with that for now. Come back in six months. Maybe I'll change my mind yeah. after I've actually seen some people who understand the book better than I do play it a little bit more, and I get to see what's happening with it. But right now, I'm not overly inspired by it, personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, so we'll see. Let's see. Um <coughs> up the picture of them. There we go. All right. Why don't you tell me about your corny boys? Yeah. Good old corn. Um, so corny. <laughs> hey, they they did a very good job on this book. They obviously listened to our episode uh, on corn where we said you should probably just split the book into two parts. You've got a mortal and a uh, demon part, which is what it is. Sadly for the demon lover that is I, I personally feel as though the mortals won out on this. However, I think you can still have multiple good fun armies from both. Mm -hmm. um, the fun of the idea that their base uh, rule where the demons just get Locus of Fury so they can survive to get to the enemy a little bit better. And the mortals have murders to the last where, oh, you've died. It's okay. We're going to try and put a mortal wound out there before we're done. Yeah. Really love the idea. Um, big hit on Hatred to Sorcery going from only on sixes to fives and sixes because only on sixes was terrible. Yeah. Thank you, whoever at GW <laughs> fought for that because on sixes you were like, are we sure we're the army that doesn't like magic? <laughs> are we sure about that? Because we don't get bonuses to dispel. Which so. is crazy. Crazy. I agree. And we have the book also has zero ways to deal with an endless spell once it's already on the table. All Small grape. Goodness. Small grape. Isn't there an, I thought they had an endless prayer that could They have endless prayers, yes, but it doesn't deal with an endless spell. It makes good. it gives a minus two to the cast if an enemy wizard is within eight inches of it. Mm -hmm. Can't touch an endless spell. Small grape. You gotta stop it before it gets cast. I thought Blood Tithe priest... was fixed. Could, Go ahead. I thought they can, attempt. they could attempt before they no longer can. 
they can attempt to stop you from casting, but they cannot stop pick up an endless spell anymore. Yep. So that is a miss. Big thing, blood tithe finally got changed. We no longer got punished for having eight blood tithe and using two. Yeah. Because in the past, if you had seven, use two, you now have zero. Now, if you have seven, use two, you have five. Oh my God. Why you didn't nerve us? We're like the rest of the demons yeah. now. Oh, it's so good. No. Um, I think that the regular blood tithe table is going to be, if you're a smart player, somebody who can think ahead enough to sneak your way in, you'll be spending one blood tithe for at least three turns of every five turn game. Uh, yeah, that's to just one thing that I've really been seeing a lot of people do is I've been seeing very little summoning and a lot of abilities being taken in the blood type. And that is where I wanted to say earlier, I think they got summoning wrong because corn has to use the same pool for its basic abilities from blood type and for its summoning. Yeah. And the lowest part of summoning is now at five. Yeah. So Which, five I mean, things I mean, have to have died where I have to have stopped five endless spells or some combination. That's a have, lot. Or you take um, the original Blades of Corn Warband from uh, Underworlds. You could, which would help you. <laughs> it's not a bad one to take, and I've seen a lot of people talk about taking it. Um, as well as, of course, you can do the prayer to give yourself another blood tithe. I think for one, it's really not yeah, worth it. D3. If it were, yeah, if it were D3, instantly it's worth it. Um, it might be too strong at D3, though. So I think it's a fine line, personally, yeah. with the book. I'd rather, I, if I have to choose between over or under. Right. Yeah, I'd rather have the fun play experience for everyone else right. where it's on the other side. So I think they did right by doing all of that. Um, boy, I'm excited to see some of what you can do, though. Um, I think points on the demon side going to be difficult. But... I think you may have to just go ahead and grab some of the mortals just to bring them in for battle line. Just so you have some screens and something to hold objectives. Or um, hoons. Yeah. Hoons. <laughs> and hoons. It was very smart that they actually made sure that there were some demons who are priests now. <laughs> um, I do think you might actually see the hero chariot now because he's a priest. And his prayer can bring back blood letters or blood crushers. Wow. So I think there's a possibility. It's only 160 points, which for that book is not bad. Um, and the fact that he's a priest is pretty big. So the other thing I, yet? with the book, I have not. So I'm going to fix that here soon. <laughs> I was told I had to bring the heat for Adeptual. Otherwise, that would have been the only army I played all weekend. Um, well, that's what you should have done. You should have just... Picked it up on your way there and just played with Neil's stuff. I mean, I already had it pre-ordered. My friendly local would just be like, hey, guys, I'm going to be a little late while I wait for them to open. I'll be up. Don't worry yeah. about it. Um, I do think that there will be some pretty strong anvil lists from the mortal side of this book. Um, I am shocked at how defensive this army is. I love it. Like, your well, place like blood warriors have three up armor. <laughs> It, it, looks awesome. like, it, it basically looks at what my Stormcast list was trying to be. It, <laughs> it says laughs them off. Yeah. No, I, I think... also blow up on a 5-up. <laughs> yeah. I think it will be great. There will be somebody out there running a 30-man of Blood Warriors. Give them bronze flesh for uh, plus one to save. Also have in their back pocket the just spend a CP for plus one. So they're basically on a 2-up ignoring Rend 1 throw in 60 wounds at somebody's face because you can give them run and charge and yeah. charge or d6 or 3d6 charge pin you on your back line and say okay good luck oh and whenever you kill them they're gonna do mortals at you yeah ridiculous it's, it's um, i love it is there any way to get that uh the four up mortal on death any better uh i don't think there's a way to modify that number uh it's always gonna be that dice roll i don't think if there is a way, um, Corgus Call, I think he doesn't make it any better. He lets you roll an additional time, mm -hmm. which is pretty big. If that's, yeah. I think there's a Reaver build out there that just suicides Reavers into people, <laughs> just with him. Um, but 
I think that's the way that army is going to get played is people are going to just go look at this armor. I'm going to run at you really hard. Okay. We're playing the pinning list that slaves of darkness is playing right now, just in a different flavor. So I'm excited to see it. Um, there's obviously, like I just said, the suiciding a bunch of ravers and the people. I think there's maybe another two lists that the mortal side can pull off. Yeah. Uh, sadly, we have a lot less demon models. So you've got blood letters. So you're going to build a blood letter bomb, run two bloodthirsters, fill it out, out with some other stuff, call it a list, which is okay. Now, I saw some people griping about the blood letters, and I read the blood letter of Insensate Rage, and I was like, or Insensate Fury or whatever. I was right, like, the blood letter, yeah. Huh, maybe I'm reading a different War Scroll. This seems to is be pretty that good the, to me. the two handed axe one? I think so. So I think the big great people have is A, he's still hitting on fours, which, yeah, that that sucks. He's hitting on fours and no rerolls, really. Right. So you can get that to threes pretty easy. We all know you can. He used to do the explosions on sixes to hit, and now it's sixes to wound, which means it's not going to happen that often. How many times? I do think you uh, five, probably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and since it's on to wounds after I've got a 50-50 to hit you, I tend to agree he's the one I'm going to take last just because he doesn't have the good abilities. Uh, one of the Bloodthirsters has the ability to just hand out a you charge with 3d6. Maybe I'm um, getting them mixed up. But, yeah, I remember there being one that I was like, meh, and then one that I was like, that's not bad, and then one I was like, you people are whining too much. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, there's definitely... There's definitely, I agree with that. There's one that is a cut above the rest. One that, if you want to run two Bloodthirsters, it's the one you run. And then, in my opinion, the two-handed Bloodthirster. So, pro probably, if I were to go over the War Scrolls, we'd probably wind up. <laughs> yeah, it probably, we would agree by the top we were done. Yeah. Um, how well do you think this hits the corn feel slash narrative? Um, so as far as narratives concerned, I like it a lot. Um, the demons are a lot more hardy now. I think they could do it just a little bit more, but okay. blood bolsters only having a four up armor save, still a little bit of a miss. They probably could have gone to a three just so that they could continue to be the scary murder machines we have in the lore. Other than that, I think the demon side they did okay on. Maybe slightly faster blood letters is all I would ask for. Mortal side, freaking perfect. People die and they're going to do mortal wounds to you because they're that angry. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yeah, I can't quite see it, but I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I, kinda, I just chopped your head off and you did a mortal wound back. I don't I don't understand. He's but... <laughs> just so fueled with rage. Yeah. He's so angry. Like you a, thought you could kill him. Like a You snake. get to die too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> No, I love it from that so perspective. What do you give the book? Um, I give First, the let book. Ask, let me ask. Um, did they get away from tight bubbles? Um, Not yes as much and as no. You like. I think they did a good job with it. So some of the old tight bubbles, like uh, with the whip from Blood Stoker, used to be like wholly within eight. Now it's just be within three which I think was a great choice, yeah. things like that. Um, they did up some of the bubbles to uh, being 16, where they used to be 8, things like that, or they at least said, hey, it's 12 inches, because 8 inches is not enough. Um, Sorry, guys, they did you know it's the number of corn, but, you know, we got to right. draw a line. I, I, get, I get why we did it, but it's just a nerf. Yeah, we it's gotta, cool. We gotta make it a is shit just flat out a nerf. Yeah. <laughs> because we arbitrarily gave this this god a number 30 years ago. <laughs> right. Now you guys all get punished for it. Not okay. That's all right. Um, yeah. So outside of that, I'd say... And the only other thing I was like, why'd you do that, is they made the uh, anti-casting skulls go from being a 12-inch range to an 8-inch range. And that, why you do that to me? It's I guess because the board is smaller now, but yeah, still smaller, and it's a real strong. It is minus two is very good yeah. for an anti cast, so it's hard. 
like I want to be like ah, but if that's the extent of my complaints, wait, what am I get the spell off? Uh, only if they roll a natural eight to cast it, then it like blows up every wizard in the dry state area. (laughs) Does the spell still go off at that point, or is it fizzle? Um, I would need to double check how it's worded currently. Um, I want to say it just fizzles, and then they take D six mortal for their trouble. So. Really hard to argue again, with, honestly. Eight is a pretty common magic cast roll, so... Yeah, it's really not something that is not going to ever happen. Right. Obviously, we can't make it be seven, because that would have just been <laughs> broken. Yeah. Let's be honest here. But eight, eight's a good number. I enjoy it. Um, oh, that's right. I just looked it up because I was curious. If they roll an eight, they forget the spell. Oh, and yeah. The, yeah, yeah. You, you have to pick the skulls up because you have to recast them after, but they <laughs> don't know it anymore. So that's what the big thing is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I think, the first time we've had that in AOS right now. It might be. We're not yeah. the first time in AOS, but the first time this edition. Right. Although, personally, right now, I think the best uh, endless prayer is the icon which just says you can't ignore, you can't inspire any presence yeah. while you're near me. And uh, if you fail, I'm going to roll and on uh, one through five, just D3 more running for you. And on a six, D6, or is it, yeah, D6 more running. So yeah, that's insanity. Awesome. Yeah. No. So if you're fighting corn, get rid of those. <laughs> well, you can't because they're prayers, because oh, they made prayers too broken. Priests. <laughs> Well, enemy priest cannot stop an endless prayer. What? Yeah. Hey, don't you play Fire Slayers? How do you not know this? Well, because mine suck. So whenever it says cannot be uncast or cannot be unspelled by what do you other mean? priests. If you, everyone who's watching this who plays Fire Slayers goes, well, what you do is you take the grand strategy where one of those will be on the uh, field at the end. Yeah, you take that and then you go to the event that doesn't allow... Well, don't do that part. Don't go to Brewhammer if you were hoping to do that. But, you know, other than that, Brewhammer's great. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. So, was there anything anything else you wanted to include? Anything else you thought was... Better? Um. No, I really like the book. Um, only I've pretty well talked over all my gripes. Favorite trying unit. to think. Ooh, favorite unit. I... Dang, is Blood Warriors. It is just Blood Warriors. I'm Blood very Warriors? excited to see what they're going to do. Favorite hero. Um, It's still a Bloodthirster. Most improved hero is going to be the uh, Blood Letter riding the uh, throne, though. Yeah. Most improved because he went from, oh, that's a model, to you'll probably actually see one. So that'll be good. Other than that, I think the book's a B plus. Um, not going to be the most competitive thing in the world. Um probably the fact that I think the corn side is not the greatest is what pulls it down a little. If the corn side could have been, or the corn, the demon side could have been yeah. pushed up just a touch. Probably been an A in my book. But well, I think they probably need to go against tradition and probably one more unit of, of demon. Yeah, you're probably right. They need something else like how Zinch has what? Flamers and Screamers and Pinks. Yeah. We just have Blood letters and hounds. We need uh, a the, third. The blood letters on Juggernaut, or whatever they're called. Yeah, it's. They're not as I good agree. as the mortal side. I know. But. That's the problem. Is I'm going to pay twenty points more for a two up armor <laughs> save and better attacks. So it's uh, hard to argue. Yeah, the question is like, well, the Rage have skull cannons, so I don't know more you want. Skull cannons terrible. Still, I'm sorry. One of the best units in the game. Just wait. Look, there was a moment in the last book whenever they messed up on some wording where people did go out and buy three because they thought they were going to do some dumb things where each cannon was going to shoot three times or something crazy. Yeah. Look, we don't live in that world. Somebody got to live in that world for like six hours one time. Right. That's it. That's the only world they'll ever be good in. Well, that reminds me of... So you give you give corn a B plus. I I, I agree. I probably put it in the same same yeah. house uh, with the exact same feedback. 
Um, but with your wording, that brings me to KO. Yes. Let me... Let's see some good old KO. Um, let's see here. Carry on Overlord. And bring up the book. Boop, boop. All right. <clears throat> so... Uh, they also listen to a lot of my feedback. <laughs> good, good. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't look like it at first, but like one of my biggest things I wanted, I wanted definite roles for the engine riggers and the sky wardens because mm-hmm. no one was taking sky wardens for anything. Right. So the sky or the engine riggers still have a D three wounds, but now the sky wardens are set at two and have additional attacks. Okay. And also one less rem. So they're one and the other guys are two. Um, now, one of the things that's driving me up a wall with the community who yeah. are just trying to, like, they're just they're just trying. Like, they're just pushing. Okay. They're seeing how far they can push things without getting spanked. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Battle trade. Oh, I know where we are now. Yep. So they're just going to try and ang- anger Daddy GW. Right. And, uh, yeah. So there is several of these. Okay. But this is is one of the ones that they're saying an FAQ is needed. Stick to your code. Amendment. So you get to pick. Yeah, there's three categories. This is the top best one. One of the abilities you get to pick is trust your guns. Once per turn. Mm -hmm. In your shooting phase. You can re-roll. One hit roll of one for an attack made by a friendly Caradron Overlord's unit. So a unit shoots, and I get to re-roll one of the dice if it's a one. Yes. Okay, that's what I got out of it. So what the, what the oh, but we need clarification is, what if they meant every one in that unit? But they didn't. They meant one shot. So, yeah. like, if the cannon fired and it rolled a one, you but got you to re-roll the cannon. One hit dice yeah. of one. That does not mean every one that you roll once. Right. You're trying. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Right. Now, the only thing I will say that does need an FAQ, which I'll... I would be surprised if it's mm-hmm. this way that's intentional. Um, and I apologize. My head's all gummed up. I'm like... Jumping in the middle of the review here. Um, You're all good, buddy. We'll go back. We'll we'll Tarantino it here in a second. It's okay. <clears throat> one of the, hit him with the flashback. Yeah. One of the artifacts you can give a boat. Charge. Roll a number of dice equal to what you rolled to charge, and deal mortal wounds. Cap. It explicitly states. So I believe that right now we're rules is written. It works. It it, it, it is doing it is doing what people are saying and doing. Mm-hmm. They're giving, like, their admiral or something, whoever's on that boat, the Tusk Helm. Uh, I'm getting additional mortals. Because it says any movement that the boat makes, anything on it counts as making the same exact move. Ah, uh, okay. So they're double dipping. Right. Now, I can't imagine that is what GW intended. Right, that you get to have mortal wounds on top of your mortal wounds. Or that a dude's wearing a helmet at the front of his boat. Right. Just, yeah. I mean, I understand why people are doing it. If the current wording is that if somebody, if a boat makes a move, that person makes a move. Right. Understand completely, and it probably does need an FAQ if that's not what they want to happen. Yeah. Until the FAQ happens, if my opponent does that. Sounds correct. Yeah. That's what the rules say. You know, yep. I, I can't fight you. I just don't think it's what's intended. Okay. Um, and again, on top of that, by the time June comes around, we'll have to worry about it anyway. <laughs> Probably right. Um, but yeah, so in general, uh, I think it's very difficult because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of little feel bad changes that all build towards a better feeling match for your opponent. Okay. Um, Now with that being said, there's obviously play in the book. 
because one of the nice things about this coming out almost right after the show last month, we actually have this being played in some events. And we have a okay. decent amount of five O's and four ones. Okay. Um, the problem is, is there's a lot of shooting that we're seeing a lot of fours, a lot of yeah. fours in a lot of places. We don't want to see them. Um, that's fair. And then a lot of rend has gone down. Yeah. So it's like attacks are in about the same place. Some places they've gone down and for melee. They went up. Um, yeah. The shooting has become less reliable. The rent has become less reliable. The damage has come down in certain places. Other mm-hmm. places have been kind of left alone or stabilized, which I'm fine with stabilizing, obviously. Right, I, yeah. I know you don't want to roll the D3 for damage. If I it's just two, you'll take it. Yeah. Give me the two. Hell. <laughs> or give me one extra attack and give me one. That's fine. Right. Um, um, but with that being said... I'm very interested to get this book on the table. Okay. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the one of the big reasons why I didn't play KO before was not necessarily the competitiveness, because I, going into it, again, like I said, I mean, I look at you and I go, there's someone who's using a mid-tier book getting upper mid-tier results because they focus yeah. on a book. Right. It's all I've played for two years now. Yeah. Um, but no one in our friends group and no one I know wants to just play KO day in and day out. Someone out there does. No one wants to play whack-a-mole every time they get on the table and would you just stand still? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so <coughs> I just couldn't do that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just couldn't do it to people. So I, I kind of just left them on the shelf which is hilarious every time i look in like a nook or a cranny i i find more i find like oh, really? this guy yeah i found him up up on the bookshelf in my um palantor uh lord of the rings he, box he was just waiting you know <laughs> he knew there'd be a time he was needed yeah uh now what's sad is so i have i have two on their base yeah, and I have two off their base, and I don't have the little flight stands. So, and GW doesn't sell that little flight stand bullshit thing. I know, I know. Not uh, a fan. So I think what I'm going to do is I have a little a set of three from my Grimnir for Votan because he has two little ravens with him. So yeah, I'm going to steal one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I have, and then I have every, then I have three others that I just bought. Okay. There we go. Uh, so we'll see. I'm. There is a lot, a lot, of tech in the book. No, I agree. I think this is one where you have to sit down and decide. I'm going to read this book. Yeah. Before you play it. Thankfully, I I, I learned this one pretty quickly. I, I think it's good. It feels a little more complicated than Slanesh, but at the same time, I don't know why. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, we'll do that. Because you're excited for yeah, it, too. Exactly. Let's be honest. Um, but like I said, I think there's there's a lot of play. I think in order to get things done, you do have to stack buffs. You do have to stack artifacts. Oh, yes, um, definitely. Stack command traits. Yeah. Uh, like my list, I actually I wanted to go um, with the main... Uh, Skyport, Barak Nar, because it has an ability that you roll a die. It, it's almost like Hammer Hall. You roll a die for every um, hero you have, and on a five up, give yourself a command point. Okay. That can be fun, definitely. Uh, the problem was, is I needed, not only did I need to be in another Skyport so I could have my Balloon Boys be battle line, I also had to take um, a command trait. To make it so the long, so the thunderers. I don't know why I want to keep calling them long strikes. The thunderers okay. are battle line. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Even though I would love to go a different route. Um, yeah. Like there. Uh, however, the narrative is pretty cool. The narrative behind that is your admiral. I don't know if it has to be your admiral, but for me, it's my admiral. Your admiral used to be a thunderer. Okay. And so the thunderers are like, 
Yay! Yeah, <laughs> like, we're man, really happy to hang out with the guy. Yeah. So we, we'll count his battle line for you, of course, man. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> um, he knows the old secret handshake. Yeah, it's all exactly. good. Uh, so yeah. I'd like that. I'm like that. That makes me feel better. But uh, the one I'd really like is there's one. The navigator is very interesting, and I'm very interested to see if he's worth his points. And that's mm -hmm. one thing I really like. All the utility heroes are between 80 and 90 points. So they're all swappable. You could Absolutely. try something out, and Absolutely. it's not your whole army to try right. something. So essentially what it is in, uh, I forget exactly what it's either hero phase or shooting phase, you roll six dice, mm -hmm. and then you choose uh, an effect that goes off all the sixes you rolled or mm -hmm. all the ones you did. Uh, okay. I, I apologize. I don't remember which is which, but one is okay. deal mortal wounds to a unit based on the Seems number you good. rolled. And then the other one is move boats a number of inches equal to like, I think it's like three inches or four inches, something like that, for okay. every, whatever you roll. Cool. And you do get to roll it and then choose. Oh, that's pretty big. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Um, so there's a command trait that you can re-roll that. Okay. Every time you roll it. Very nice. I'm like, oh, that's that would be the way to go. <laughs> yeah. But meh, maybe in another list. Um and then also the I'm super excited to see that they one thing they pulled a lot out of was mm -hmm. there was a lot of this ability only affects flying models or flying units. Right. So they, they made pulled, sure you do. Yeah. I would say ninety percent of those out. I think there's only one or two abilities like that remaining. Yeah. So you're like, okay, Good. well, that's never going to come in handy. <laughs> right. Um, not never, but it's never going to be the unit you want when you need it. Like, mm -hmm. Unless I can cast Levitate on a target model or a target unit instead of target uh, friendly unit. <laughs> yeah, really. You're not flying. Get him. <laughs> nah. Um, but yeah, then uh, the, the Navigator also has Dispel. Oh, that's good. The army definitely needs that. So, good. I, uh, I do wish there was a little bit more. I wish it was either two dispels or got plus one to a dispel or something to give a little more gas. Look, the corn doesn't get a plus one to dispel. You ain't getting one. But I, I agree with you. They should well, have at least two. You guys are sitting there screaming and yelling at each other, jerking each other off in the back, where my guys are at least like in like telescopes. Like, that guy's casting a spell. <laughs> no, that would be... That could be a fun one. If if inside the boat has unlimited uh, dispel range, could be entertaining too. That would be cool. Because he's looking through a telescope on a boat in the air. Yeah. That could be fun. It's little yeah. things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of little things that I wouldn't mind adding, but like I think if I added them all up at the end of the day, then it'd be overpowered. Right, um, so I get it. Yeah. We have to stop at some point. Uh, so like I said, as of right now, uh, I think, like we've said almost every single time, I think points are a little too high. And you know what? Since we've said that about the last six to nine books, six to ten books. But this one, I mean it. Yeah, well, I don't know. Bit, I think I think the problem is, is they need to figure out a way to limit the amount of boats you can take without them costing a quarter of your army. That's fair. I'll give you that. Um, because, like, so my, my list is mm -hmm. 20 Thunderers. Six Skywards. Yeah. Frigate Ironclad. And then boats. Frigate Ironclad yeah. and Heroes. Like, yeah. That's You're done. not a lot. Yeah. And no, like, it isn't. So I, what? It's like 800 points in boats just for two boats, something like that? Almost 900. Okay. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's the Ironclad, I feel like it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Okay. The frigate is now obviously the yeah. melee uh, boat. I, I don't know a whole lot about this book, but I read the frigate and went, ah, oh, so that'll be in every list. Right. Uh, so. Because the ironclad, like I said, I mean, the the shooting went down. A lot of the mm. attack, your number of attacks went down. Your shooting profiles got worse. Rend went down. Damage, I think, stayed pretty much the same. I think okay. something got. I think the main cannon, the big cannon, got bolstered. 
Okay. I think that's 1d3 plus 3 now, I think. Don't quote me. Gotcha. Um, but, like, I don't know. I feel like what they could have done would just, like, simply be, like, I don't know, um, something like bird's eye view or something, and increase range of all shooting weapons by four. For all the people on board or something. Right. Yeah, that could be entertaining. Like, yeah, I like as that little idea. as that. Because, yeah. like, that was the other thing is all of the rangers came in. Yeah, I know that everyone who's on foot with a rifle doesn't have much of a range. Right, you have 12 so, yeah. inches max. I mean, right. now there's special weapons for the Thunderers, but... Right. But no, being able to make everyone on top of the boat have an 18-inch range might be rather interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't think that would be game-breaking, and I think it would uh, give a little more play. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't disagree. Because I said, I I basically have... I'm bringing an Ironclad to our local GT at the end of the month. Okay. Because it's what I have painted, not because I think it's what's good. Understood. Okay. Um, <coughs> I don't um, I don't think it's trash. It's not but a larial if... level of point throwing away. <laughs> right, right. But if you had to pick probably not the boat you would take right well so again for regardless of how the book turns out yeah um chuck son of a bitch neil and i have have pacted that we are taking ko to nashcon right. yeah have our own little competition it'll be sad i can't make it this year but um, yeah no yeah it was, I'm gonna excited be, to see. it was gonna be corn i know i know it's gonna be corn I, and then you're like can't do no, it guys i will not I yep. Go. Yep. Um, I love that event. You guys have to go eat good barbecue for me, make yeah. up for my missing it. So it's all um, good. But yeah. So so for that, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring that shooty list. Yep. And then my secondary list is gonna be two frigates with, um, one with six sky wardens and three endron riggers. But endron riggers are primarily for healing. Um, okay. And then the other one is going to be. Um, probably nine Endron Riggers. Okay. Yeah, so just again, go all in on it. So that's essentially the list, is those, and I think, I can't remember if I reinforced a unit of Arcanauts or not, if it's just 10 man. Right, so it's very much all your eggs in one basket. We're going to see if this works. If it doesn't, it's not going to go well. Right. Um, that's almost one where you sit there and go, is this only have three objectives on the board? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's probably worth it for this one then. And again, that's one of the reasons why um, I might take... Um, so you can put special weapons on the Balloon Boys on both builds. Yeah. Same weapons on both builds. And largely, I don't think they're worth it. Okay. I think you need every swing to every weapon you have. Right. In order to they, be good. they very much are melee pieces. Yeah. For the three-man of Endron Riggers on the one frigate, I might get yeah. a grapnel launcher on them. Okay. To go and try and grab objectives. Okay. Understood. That's not one big... thing that they do need to FAQ. Okay. It's not clear if you can grapnel launcher off the boat or not. Ah, uh, okay. I don't see like here's the thing is like just thinking about the game, I don't see that being mm -hmm. groundbreaking. Yeah. But at the same time I do see it being something that GW doesn't like. Right, something they did not intend. I could see that as well. And not being a huge deal per se, but still being something that they're like, that's not exactly how that was supposed to go. I want you to get off first. <laughs> right. You gotta actually hop off. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I, I think it's... I think the, the best way to win with this is to not put on blinders and go, well, this is the way this unit plays. Right. This unit plays the way it needs to be played. Remember all its options, which is what like my biggest weakness in every game. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. I understand. Um, so, like I said, we'll see. I um, I'm also going to give this a B. Okay. Okay. Uh, I love that they ripped the artifact amendment and footnote away from the skyports. And now, so you have your Skyport, where you pick your ability, and then you have your you have three choices of each, and you pick from there. Um, okay. As much as I didn't think they needed another foot hero, I think the code right 
uh, alleviate some of the stressors. Because footnotes are primarily once per games. Right. I like the idea that you can go ahead and grab another once per game. Right. So uh, basically the, the tech is start with the 3d6 charge. Mm -hmm. Charge. <laughs> As it turns out. Change it. Probably, like, if they're shooting in the list, change it to the one where you get to shoot back at something that shoots you. And then, heaven forbid, someone shoots at my my boat with the 20 thunders on it. Right, yeah. So, unit of 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I, I think it's going to take it's going to take a lot of test games in order to really be able to get to the point where I can win with this. And I hope knowing that going into it helps a little bit. I'm sure it will. I'm uh, sure it will. It'll help you out with stopping and realizing you got to open up your mind and just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's it's actually <coughs> reminds me a little bit of Sylvaneth. Okay. Where I look down at the table, I go, that's not a lot, but it does right. a lot of work. Yes. So long as you know how to use that tool boy is it gonna beat someone over the head yeah because that's always how i feel that two times i've gotten to play against really big good sylvaneth people i go yeah. they don't have a lot over there i'll be fine then they start beating me over the head with it i'm like i can't stop a thing they're doing right now they're welcome to just beat me up however much they want i was watching uh honest wargamer mm -hmm. uh the list reports and uh, yeah oak and brow specifically Oh boy, having fought against it at uh, what was it, Brewhammer? Brewhammer. It's awesome. Fifty nine percent win rate. It's so good. I love it. If you understand is, what you're doing with it, you it's have cool. to bring tree lords. So <laughs> right, you have to love tree lords. My, I hate tree lords at this point. Mm hmm. Uh, because my so that's the end of your idea for Oak and Brow. I built one tree lord, and he's in about he's in about a hundred pieces. Oh like, no! Just every time I touch him, every time I put him in, take him out, something breaks. Whether it's a branch or finger, um, his little um, the second I finished building him, I I uh, mm -hmm. I accidentally brought my arm forward, knocked him off, and broke off all of his little whips things. Oh, and I oh. can't even find them. I don't even know where they that are. That hurts. That hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was close to, I was really close to just ripping, ripping, because there was one tendril left. I was close to just ripping that out and putting in like an endless spell or something in there. Nice. Nice. I don't know what it would be, but maybe put the bugs. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, so where, where's the damage come from? Because like top bracketed tree lords do not do that much damage. I think it's just the consistency of continuing to do that. Between that, Durthu, obviously, is the damage of the list, and Draika. Boy, I miss... I did not respect Draika enough at first whenever I was playing against her. Boy, when she decides she wants to hit something, she hits it hard. <laughs> and honestly, as long as you can roll slightly consistently with the Tree Lords and stuff, they do half decent work honestly i think they stick around so they're able to pin right. pretty easily yeah so they're tough enough that they'll at least you'll get two combats out of them yeah and a lot of lists at least a lot of lists i personally run are terrible for any sort of staying power so if you stay oh boy am i i'm in trouble yeah so yeah. so all right well i think we did respectful time still gave people i think we yeah I think we did all right. In, in the state that you're in, I say you you did, did a respectful job. Or, yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. So next month, we got, we'll talk about, uh, are you doing the Warpstone? I don't know. I've talked to Jamie about it. I'm sure there's still spots open. I might do just, just pop it. in. Two weeks from now? Mm, oh, no, might be able no. to do that. Might be able weeks? to do that. Don't tell me it's two weeks. I don't got that. It's I think it's actually, like two weeks from now, yeah, bud. You're right. It's two weeks. Shit. Hey, you're welcome. Shit. Uh, <laughs> um, do it. And do it quicker because I don't know if the things are filled up or what. So. Right. I'll have uh, to have a look, see what's going on. So do that so we can report on it. Okay. Okay. And, uh, so we'll talk about... Um, 
me see. When is what's Friday? Last Friday of the month. Okay, so that next week 20, is yeah. Warhammer Fest. So we got Ooh, boy. Fabricator Forge, Warpstone GT, featuring people from Team USA. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna beat our ass. Um yep. we're gonna have the Warhammer Fest. Probably gonna have one of the death books come out we're in that have, time. No, no, both are up for pre order already. Or coming up for pre order this Saturday. So we're gonna oh my have goodness. both I missed that. Oh. OBR and Yep. Soul I'll Blade. take the OBR, you get S O you get S O B. You get S O B Neil's stuff. Anyway. Uh, all right, everybody. I'm gonna go home. I am home. I'm a. I'm just gonna hit stop recording. I'm gonna pass out. You got anything? Bye, everybody. <laughs> all right, that's enough out of me. Bye, guys. <laughs>